Welcome to Waterline Academy, my name's Paul and in this video about your Paddy Open Water Diver course, I'm going to show you the top 5 dive skills that you're going to use on every dive. So if you're new to diving or just looking to refresh your skills, then consider subscribing to this channel for weekly videos on scuba diving skills and tips. Let's dive in. One of the most important skills you're going to use on every dive is clearing your mask. Clearing your mask is as simple as blowing out through your nose so that air replaces the water that's in your mask. Now, before I get into the detail about how this skill works, there's something really important that you need to understand about pressure. When you go scuba diving, water creates pressure. The deeper you go, the higher the pressure is. Water can't be compressed, but air can. And so as you're descending, any air space that you have is going to be compressed that air is going to be squeezed into a tighter space. Pressure works in very much the same way as pumping your bicycle tire. As you pump air, you're increasing the pressure in your tire. I've rigged this balloon in a bottle to show you what happens to air spaces as the pressure increases. The balloon represents air spaces like your lungs or your mask. As you increase the pressure, the balloon gets compressed or squeezed. As you descend, the water pressure increases the deeper you go, and any air spaces are gonna be compressed into a smaller volume, the same amount of air but squeezed into a tighter space. And that brings me back to clearing your mask. There are essentially three reasons you need to clear your mask. As the water pressure increases, the air space in your mask is going to get compressed or squeezed. And so you need to equalize that air space by breathing out through your nose to let air into the mask and equalize that air space with the surrounding water pressure. The next is if you get water into your mask you need to be able to clear the mask of any water. And the third is, at times during your dive, condensation may build up on the inside of the lens. And so you can let water into the mask to clear that condensation, clear the mask and continue your dive. You may have noticed by now that a scuba diving mask has a nose piece. And that is so that you can breathe out through your nose to equalize and clear the mask. When you're choosing a mask, you need to check three things. The skirting of the mask should seal around your face as soon as it touches. Next, sniff through your nose to create a vacuum. The mask shouldn't fall from your face. And last, make sure that the bridge of the mask isn't hitting against your nose. To practice clearing your mask, let some water in. You can do that by breaking the seal at the top of the mask and letting the water trickle in. At first, just let a little bit of water in so that you can get used to the sensation. Take a long, deep breath. Hold the top of the mask to make sure no air escapes. Then, breathe out through your nose while tilting your head back. That'll make sure that the water drains out the lowest point of the mask. Your mask should now be clear. If it's not, simply repeat the process until it is. Before we get into equalizing your ears, if you're finding this interesting and are considering taking a diving course, stick around because in a moment, I'm gonna tell you how you can start your open water diver course for free, no matter where you are in the world. You'll often hear divers talking about equalizing their ears. In actual fact, they're talking about equalizing their eustachian tubes. As you've just seen with the balloon, any air space is going to be compressed the deeper you go. And that means the two air spaces inside your body are also going to be compressed. Your eustachian tubes and your lungs. In the next skill, I'm going to show you how to clear your regulator. And when I do that, I'm going to talk more about equalizing the air space in your lungs. But for now, equalizing your eustachian tube is something really important, so pay attention. As you descend and the water pressure increases, the air space in your eustachian tube is going to be squeezed. Some divers might tell you that you can equalize that air space just by wiggling your jaw from side to side or swallowing. And that may be true for some divers, but most divers need to use the Volsalva maneuver. The Volsalva maneuver is simply blocking your nose and blowing gently against your blocked nose. If you do that now, you'll feel your ears pop. That's because air is being forced into your eustachian tubes from your sinuses. As you're descending, it's really important to equalize early and often. When I'm in the water, I equalize a little bit before I descend. That means I'm putting a little bit more air into my eustachian tubes before I begin my descent. That'll loosen my eustachian tubes just a little bit and prepare them for the increasing pressure as I descend. Then, once I begin my descent, I'm gonna equalize 
every few feet. By equalizing early and often, I'll make sure that I don't have any problems the deeper I get. If you descend too much without having equalized, you might not be able to equalize at that depth in which case you need to come up a little bit, equalize, and then continue your descent. If you don't equalize at all, as you descend, the water pressure is going to build up outside your eardrum. At a certain point, your eardrum will rupture. That means that it'll burst and water will rush into your ear canal. While that in itself is not life-threatening, it will disorientate you, which could lead to further problems. Every now and then I have trouble equalizing my ears. And so I make use of other techniques like wiggling my jaw from side to side, extending my jaw outwards, swallowing, and even massaging the back of my ear. Those techniques will loosen the ear canal and help you get air into your eustachian tubes using the Volsalva maneuver. Divers Alert Network is a scuba diving medical organization. They've got a fantastic article on equalizing your ears, and I'll link that in the description below. The next skill on the list is clearing your regulator. But before we get into clearing your regulator, there's something more you need to know about pressure. Coming back to the balloon, as you decrease the pressure, that airspace is going to expand. As you ascend and the water pressure decreases, any airspace is going to expand to equalize against the decreasing water pressure. Now, clearing your regulator is a lot like clearing your mask. You need to replace any water with air. There's one really important part to clearing your regulator and that has to do with equalizing the air in your lungs. Throughout your dive your lungs are going to be equalizing while you're breathing. As you breathe in the air will equalize with the surrounding water pressure and as you breathe out you're going to breathe out that compressed air. However if you take a breath from your regulator and then ascend the air in your lungs is going to expand. If you don't release that air at a certain point your lungs are going to rupture. And so the most important part about clearing your regulator is that you must not hold your breath. And in order to do that you need to blow a small stream of bubbles a lot like when you're whistling. To practice clearing your regulator take a long deep breath. Hold the regulator on the hose and take it out of your mouth. Remember to blow a small stream of bubbles to ensure your airway is open. Hold the mouthpiece of the regulator facing downwards. That'll make sure that the regulator doesn't free flow. The regulator is going to fill with water. So when you put it back in your mouth, you need to clear the water by blowing out into the regulator. Once you've cleared the regulator, hold your tongue to the roof of your mouth and take a cautious breath. There may still be water in the regulator, in which case, your tongue will deflect the water while you draw a slow breath. If there's still water in your mouth or the regulator, blow that out and continue your dive. If the regulator's been out of your mouth for some time and you don't have any air in your lungs, you can still clear the regulator using the purge button on the front of the regulator. Hold your tongue to the roof of your mouth to seal your airway. Then press the purge button on the front of the regulator. That'll blast any water out of the regulator and then you can take a cautious breath and continue your dive. Now I often get asked, if you're already on your dive and you're not ascending, why can't you just hold your breath? And there's two reasons. The first and most important here is that you want to develop the habit of blowing air out of your lungs whenever the regulator is out of your mouth. That means you'll operate on autopilot. Whenever the regulator is out of your mouth, you'll be blowing a small stream of bubbles. That'll make sure that your airway is open and whether you're ascending or a swell passes overhead and changes the water pressure above you, your airway will be open and you won't risk the possibility of rupturing your lung. And the second reason has to do with the relationship between pressure and depth. Okay, stick with me here because this is where I need to take you back to high school mathematics. When you're at the surface, you have one atmosphere of air pressure acting on your body. That means that you've got all the weight of the air above you that equals one atmosphere. Every 10 meters that you descend, you gain an additional atmosphere. So at the surface, you've got one atmosphere. Descend to 10 meters and you've got two atmospheres of pressure acting on you. You've effectively doubled the pressure. When you descend to 20 meters, you have three atmospheres of pressure acting on you. So you can see that in the first 10 meters is the greatest change in pressure. You double the pressure from one atmosphere to two atmospheres. One huge misconception is that when you go scuba diving, you're breathing oxygen. That's just not true. You take normal air 
and you compress it into a cylinder. Air is made up of roughly 20% oxygen and 80% nitrogen. Now comes the interesting part. When you're at the surface, one atmosphere of air equals 20% oxygen and 80% nitrogen. The mathematical formula looks like this. One equals 0.2 oxygen plus 0.8 nitrogen. That means when you descend to 10 meters, roughly 33 feet, you have two atmospheres. And so the formula reads two equals 0.4 oxygen plus 1.6 nitrogen. Now this is important and I'm gonna come back to this later when we talk about the bends. For now, I wanna talk about carbon dioxide. You see, when you breathe, your body metabolizes oxygen or it burns oxygen. That means when you breathe in 20% oxygen, you're going to breathe out around 16% oxygen and the other 4% will be carbon dioxide. The longer you hold your breath, the more carbon dioxide you'll breathe out. When you're at the surface, that carbon dioxide will make you feel lightheaded. When you're at depth, that carbon dioxide is going to give you a headache. At 10 meters, because you've doubled the pressure, 4% of carbon dioxide is the equivalent of having 8% at the surface. And that means if you hold your breath while you're scuba diving, you're gonna get a headache which isn't as bad as rupture in your lungs, but it will ruin your dive. Earlier in the video, I said I would tell you how you can start your open water diver course for free, no matter where you are in the world. PADI is one of the largest certification agencies in the world. And there are others like SSI, which is Scuba Schools International. While Paddy charge you to start the theory section of your open water course, SSI recognized that it's inexpensive to deliver digital media in today's day and age. And so they make the theory section of your open water course free. And in order to access that, all you need to do is follow the link that I've set up in the description of this video. Set up an account on the My SSI website and you'll be able to download the My SSI app. In that app, you'll be able to start the open water theory section for free, no matter where you are in the world. That app will also give you details on your closest dive center, where you'll be able to take the pool dives of your open water course. So if you're interested in taking your open water course, then click on the link below and set up an account on the My SSI website. Before I show you how to control your buoyancy so that you can float seemingly weightless above the reef, I need to show you the second part to clearing your regulator, and that is how to recover your regulator if it comes out of your mouth. On the odd occasion, I've had my regulator knocked out of my mouth, normally from somebody who's descending above me and has kicked it out by mistake. There are other times where I've taken it out on purpose to take a photograph, and other times where I'm at the surface and I have my snorkel in my mouth, and I need to change my snorkel for my regulator so that I can descend. Whenever your regulator comes out of your mouth, it's gonna drop to your right hand side. So to recover your regulator, tilt your body to create a gap between the regulator and your body. Using your right arm, pull your elbow into your body. Touch your knee and then slide your hand up your bum and circle your arm out, around and up until it's in front of you. Slide your left hand down your right arm until you find the regulator hose over your shoulder. Then you can replace the regulator, clear it and continue your dive. We're about to get stuck into the next skill, but before we do, I wanted to let you know that I've recently set up an online store with a wide range of scuba diving designs on t-shirts. Please support this channel by buying a t-shirt for yourself or as a gift for another scuba diver. The proceeds from that store go directly into making better videos on scuba diving skills and tips, just like this next one. Let's dive back in. Whenever you're on a dive, you need to control your buoyancy. To keep you warm on a dive, you wear a wetsuit. A wetsuit's made out of neoprene, which is thousands of tiny bubbles, and that wetsuit will float at the surface. That means you need to wear a weight belt, which is made of lead, so that you can become negatively buoyant and descend into your dive. To neutralize that negative buoyancy, you wear a BCD, or a buoyancy control device which is the jacket that you wear, which inflates and deflates at your command. That means you can inflate your BCD to stay positively buoyant and float at the surface. Then you deflate your BCD so that you can begin your descent. When you get down to your dive depth, you want to become neutrally buoyant so that you float seemingly weightless above the reef. 
At the end of your dive, when you're ascending, you let air out of your BCD to control the speed of your ascent. Before I show you how to control and neutralize your buoyancy, there's something more you need to know about pressure and how it relates to nitrogen. The most important thing that you need to know about nitrogen is that as you descend, your body is going to absorb nitrogen. And as you ascend, your body is going to expel nitrogen. You already know from earlier in this video that air is made up of oxygen and nitrogen. You know that your body is going to metabolize or burn the oxygen. And what you need to know now is that the nitrogen is going to be absorbed into your body. The deeper you go and the longer you stay, the more nitrogen your body will absorb. At the end of your dive, when you begin to ascend, your body will stop absorbing nitrogen and start expelling nitrogen. As your body expels that nitrogen, it'll rejoin your bloodstream and you'll breathe it out the same way you breathe it in. However, if you ascend too quickly, the nitrogen that your body's absorbed won't have enough time to dissolve into your bloodstream. Instead, it'll start to form bubbles, which could end up in your heart, your lungs, your brain, but normally in your joints, and that's why it's called the bends. Bubbles will most often form in the soft tissue of your joints, for example in your elbow, which will make it painful or uncomfortable to straighten your arm. And so it gets the nickname the bends because you're bending your arm. To control your buoyancy underwater, you need to add enough air into your BCD so that you neither float nor sink. You become neutrally buoyant. Being neutrally buoyant underwater means that you can drift over the reef without having to swim to stay at a certain depth. To start practicing your buoyancy, let all the air out of your BCD so that you know that you're negatively buoyant. Then add a small amount of air and take a breath to see how that's affected your buoyancy. When you first start diving, most instructors are gonna give you quite a lot of lead to make sure that you're negatively buoyant. This will help them during a course to make sure you don't go floating to the surface in an uncontrolled ascent. That means during your course, you'll probably have to add more air to your BCD than you will in the future once you become confident in your buoyancy control skills. Add a small amount of air, take a few breaths to see how it's affected your buoyancy. If you're still negatively buoyant, add some more air and take some more breaths until you feel your knees lift from the pool. When you feel your knees lift from the pool as you breathe in and touch the pool as you breathe out, that's when you're neutrally buoyant. You can now swim around the pool and enjoy floating like they do in space. Once you fine tune the air in your BCD, the next thing to concentrate on is using the air in your lungs to control your buoyancy. As you breathe in, you'll ascend and as you breathe out, you'll descend. That means if you take a long, slow, deep breath, you'll ascend over a longer period. And if you exhale slowly over a long period, you'll descend more than you would if you exhaled quickly. It'll take some time to master using the air in your lungs to control your buoyancy. That's probably the biggest difference between advanced divers and novice divers, is the ability to use the air in their lungs to control and fine tune their buoyancy during a dive. Don't expect to get this all overnight. It takes some time to get a feel for things like the water rushing past your face to know that you're ascending or descending. And with experience and the more dives you do, you'll learn to use the air in your lungs to fine tune and control your buoyancy. If you found value in this video, then click the link to this video to explore more scuba diving skills and tips.